Theodore He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too A friendly tugboat too Oh, Theodore Likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do Hello. Oh, I'm in the middle of fixing this scanner. It's not quite right. This sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? <laughs> you could almost make a game out of this, couldn't you? No, the only problem is, this machine has a big job to do. You see, when the ships are coming in and out of the harbor. The machine, well, it helps me tell them where to stay. So I've got to be very careful about how I operate it. A Theodore, well, he knows how to be careful with important things. No, wait, that's a good story for today. Theodore was out practicing turns on his good friend, Bedford Bowie. They were having the time of their lives. Theodore charged past his friend as close as he could, making him spin like a top. Ding, ding, said the excited Bedford, ringing his bell. The two of them laughed and laughed. Spin me again, Theodore, Bedford yelled. My pleasure, Theodore chuckled and spun his friend again. Theodore's turns. Foduck appeared. What you're doing isn't very safe, Foduck said, feeling quite serious because he was, after all, the safety tug. Bedford has an important job to do and shouldn't be played with, he said. We were doing our jobs practicing turns, Theodore blurted out, feeling a little hurt and upset at Foduck's stern warning. Well, it looked to me like you were playing. We weren't playing, Theodore protested. Bedford needs to stay steady in his place, so the ships know the safe way to go, said Foduck firmly. He can't be spinning all over the place like a top. And with that, the vigilant tug went on his way. Why is... Foduck being so serious, Theodore thought to himself. Spin me again, Theodore, shouted Bedford. Well, okay, one last time. Theodore smiled and turned quickly past Bedford, spinning the laughing belt. Come back soon, chuckled Bedford. I'll see you tomorrow, shouted Theodore, and gave a big, happy whistle goodbye. Something happened behind him that he didn't see. And it was a big problem. Bedford had broken free of his anchor. The little bell buoy was floating away. The next morning at the Great Ocean Dock, the tugboats were getting their jobs for the day when the dispatcher turned to Theodore. There's a small cargo ship ready to be taken out, the dispatcher announced. Theodore, you will be the tug in charge. Theodore was pleased. He'd be the one in front, guiding the way and giving the orders. As the tugboats set off to do their jobs, Hank floated up to Theodore. I'm working with you today, Theodore, called Hank excitedly. I'll be right behind you. Theodore smiled. He always felt big and important when he was the tug in charge. This is going to be fun, said Theodore, and gave a loud, bright blast of his whistle. But just then, Foda came over to Theodore again. Remember, you're working, not playing, said the safety tug, and went on his way. It's not fair, thought Theodore, feeling a little angry at Foda. He thinks I'm not serious just because I was playing, I mean practicing, with Bedford. And with a sharp toot of his whistle, a slightly upset Theodore led Hank to their job.
Well, it didn't take long for Theodore to cheer up again. He loved being the tug in charge and proudly led the way out of the harbor. We're almost at the spot, Hank, Theodore said, full of confidence. We'll let this ship go on its way as soon as we pass Bedford. That wouldn't be long, Theodore thought, because Bedford was just ahead. Or was he? Aren't we close to Bedford yet? asked Hank. Yes, I think so, said Theodore, who was starting to feel confused. Where's Bedford? wondered Theodore. It seemed like the same place as always, except that Bedford was missing. Maybe I'm in the wrong place, Theodore questioned himself. Could I be lost? Theodore took a good look around, trying to figure out just where he was. Are we at the spot yet? Hank asked again. Hold on, Theodore said, thinking fast. Bedford should have been right there, warning boats away from the big rock that was just underneath. He steered as clear from where he thought the rock might be as he could, because without Bedford it was hard to tell. Let the ship off here, Theodore told Hank, trying to sound as in charge as he could. But inside, Theodore was feeling worried. What happened to Bedford? After Theodore and Hank had sent the cargo ship on her way, Theodore anxiously checked the spot where Bedford was supposed to be. But there wasn't any sign of him. as Theodore floated back and forth looking. Fodok motored over. He was just passing by on his regular safety patrol. Fodok, have you seen Bedford? I was going to ask you the same question, Fodok replied. Bedford seems to have just disappeared. Bedford's job was to warn ships away from that rock, Fodok said grimly. Without him, there's a real safety problem. Now Theodore was really worried. Why would Bedford have left his place, he wondered. Vodok's radar mast started busily spinning as he puzzled over Theodore's question. I don't know why he left, Vodok finally said. But if Bedford was floating free, I'm certain the waves would have pushed him far up the harbor and into the shore. Then we have to try to find him, Theodore said quickly. You'll have to go, said Fodok. I'll stay here and guard Bedford's spot. Then, Fodok gave a big blast. He wanted to test his special emergency whistle so he could warn ships away from the dangerous place. With the sound of Fodok's whistle filling the air, Theodore set off as fast as he could go. He was going to find his friend and nothing was going to stop him. Theodore followed the shoreline, looking everywhere for Bedford. But he was nowhere to be seen. Every few minutes, Theodore loudly blew his whistle, hoping the bellboy would hear him. But as hard as Theodore tried, he could not find his friend. As he looked, Theodore kept wondering to himself, why did Bedford leave his place? Just as Theodore was about to give up and head back to his dock, he heard something. Or he thought he heard something. He stopped and listened very carefully. Nothing. I must be hearing things, Theodore thought to himself, and he started to move on. But then, he heard it again. This time, Theodore didn't make a sound. He listened as carefully as he'd ever listened before. And he heard a very quiet, very soft, ding, ding, ding. What is that sound? wondered Theodore, moving closer to the shore. 
But the sound stopped, and so did Theodore, still listening as hard as he could. I really must have been hearing things, thought Theodore, and he was just about to turn around when... There it is again, thought Theodore. Could it be? Theodore looked hard at the shore, straining to see who was making the sound. speck inside a pile of driftwood that had washed up in the cove. Moving in even closer, Theodore saw... It was Bedford! Theodore! Bedford moaned. I thought I'd never see you again. I sure am glad to see you too, Theodore said with a big sigh of relief. Using his tow rope, Theodore pulled Bedford out. Thanks, Theodore, said Bedford. Your chain must have broken because of all the spinning, Theodore said sadly. We were just practicing turns, Bedford piped in. No, Fodick was right, admitted Theodore. We were playing more than practicing. Bedford had to agree, because it was true. Let's go home, Bedford. And Theodore towed his friend back home. The next day, Theodore visited Bedford, who was back in his spot. My chain's all fixed, announced Bedford. I'm glad to hear it, said Theodore. Look who's coming, Bedford chirped, and Theodore turned to see Fodok. Theodore was feeling a little shy, because Fodok's warning to him had turned out to be true. Spinning Bedford had caused the bell buoy's chain to break and sent him floating away. Finally, Theodore looked Fodak in the eye and broke the silence. I'm sorry, Fodak, for giving you such a hard time, Theodore apologized. You were right about everything. Then Theodore waited for Fodak to frown and say something very serious. But instead, Fodak gave Theodore a gigantic smile. Race you back to the docks, Fodak yelled. Theodore grinned his biggest grin of the week. Last one, there's a, an octopus's uncle, shouted Theodore. And with a wink and a whistle to Bedford, Theodore and Fodok had a very careful race back to the harbor, laughing the whole way. Now I think I've got it. Pretty close. But I think if I push one more button, we'll be there. Perfect. That's it. Now we have a scanner that's working perfectly and can do the job the way that it should. Oh, I think it's trying to tell me that it's time that I did my job, too. Thanks for visiting with us here in the Big Harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. <laughs>